We have our final four at the WTA Finals in Riyadh, and defending champion Igor Sviantek will not be fighting for the final trophy of the season. Instead, we're treated to another installment of Golf v Sabalenka. I'll break down this match and our other semifinal between Barbora Krajcikova and Shinwen Jang. Hey, my name is Christian Basnight, and welcome to Christian's Court where I cover tennis from all angles. If you haven't yet already, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell to join Christian's crew so you're notified whenever I post more WTA Finals updates like this. The big popcorn match of the WTA Finals knockout stage is going to be the semifinal between Coco Golf and Arena Sabalenka, who will be meeting for the ninth time. Both Arena and Coco looked very strong in their opening two round robin matches as they won their opening two in straight sets. Sablenka she beat Zhang three and four, followed by a three and five win over Jasmine Paolini. And Coco, meanwhile, she defeated Jessica Pagula three and two before getting her second win over the world number two, Iga Shiantek, winning three and four. Arena had less on the line in her latest round robin match against Elena Rabakina as she had already secured the year-end world number one ranking, and she had already won her purple group. Arena did not look that sharp in her 6-4-3-6-6-1 loss to the Kazakhstani, but giving credit to Elena, she definitely looked more like her slam winning self, and it's a good omen for her 2025 season. Rabakina also said after the match that she wants to get to the world number one ranking soon, and she already has the skills, I believe, to do so, but now I think with Goran Ivanisevic joining her team, she can better maximize her potential. Meanwhile, Coco needed to win at least one set to win her orange group and avoid facing Sabalenka, but of course, that did not happen. Golf fell to Barbora Krajcikova, 7-5, 6-4. Krejcikova's win, by the way, sent Igor Sviantek home, who actually beat the Czech in the first round-robin match in three sets. However, Iga's straight sets defeat to Coco really did her in. Iga did end her season on a high, though, as she, she defeated Dara Kesikina, who played as an alternate today after Jessica Pagula withdrew from the tournament, citing a knee injury. Kazakina wasn't out there for long, though, in Riyadh, as she only played for 51 minutes. In fact, only winning one game in a 6-1-6 love beat down. Daria just did not have the weapons at all to trouble Shiantek, and Iga had all the time in the world and dictated proceedings for the entire match, pretty much. Now, the question here is, is this latest form of Iga indicative of her rounding into form and hopefully having a return to form at the top of 2025, or was it simply a case of Iga just really enjoying the matchup? You know, this is Iga's first top 10 win, actually, since the Olympics, as she had lost her four previous top 10 matches. Shiantek's season, though, is technically not totally over as she will be competing in the Billie Jean King Cup next week in Spain. Shiante actually was not aware that despite her victory, she had no control over her qualifying for the knockout stage as revealed by this funny moment in her post-match press conference. Did you understand going in that that match would have no bearing on your advancement to the semifinals? Um, you mean it didn't matter? It, no. Why? It, it did not. Complicated tiebreakers. No one told you. What? Basically, winning or losing, you, your result doesn't matter. Then the later one does. Oh. <laughs> 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 the golf Krejcikova match was played after Iga's win, and it was pretty topsy-turvy. Coco actually served very well throughout, and it is, was one of her best-serving performances in a very long time, especially in the opening set, where she hit nine aces to just one double fault. However, golf's main issue out there was her ground game, especially her forehand. Lately, Coco's forehand has been a strong asset for her, but against Krejcikova, it was a clear weakness. And she seemed to really lose her rhythm on that wing, and she framed a lot more balls on that forehand side. At one point, Coco hit 30 unforced airs on her forehand to Krejcikova's 10, which tells you everything you need to know. The big outlier here, though, is the breakpoint conversion rate. Coco only cashed in on one of her 12 breakpoint opportunities, which is just unacceptable. You could tell in the final game that Krejcikova's nerves were troubling her a bit, but Coco did not lock in well enough from the ground, and she just let the check off the hook. That being said, full credit to Kachigaba, though, for playing a very solid match and really outplaying golf from the ground. You can see there she hit more winners 
and fewer unforced errors compared to Coco. But Bora's forehand was definitely more steady of the two, and she was not afraid to engage in many forehand to forehand rallies, which worked in her favor. Kachikova's variety also helped her out at times as she used her slices to draw Coco in before really nailing the pass. Plus, the check wasn't as troubled by the impeccable golf defense thanks to her willingness to come forward and finish off points at the net. Petty Crocker, a Twitter mutual of mine, made a good comparison when he said that Kachigova is the Adele of the WTA finalists, as she does not show up often, but when she does, she makes a big splash on the tour. Barbour was criticized a bit for being granted entry into the finals, despite having a pretty lackluster year, aside from her winning Wimbledon, of course, her winning a Grand Slam granted her direct entry into the finals as long as she remained inside the top 20 and she's ranked 13 in the world. But Rhoda was also in poor form since the Olympics as she was also dealing with various injuries. So I didn't expect her to do, her to do much at all in these finals. So she proved me wrong for sure. But I definitely think that Barbora deserves to win this orange group. She made... Iga really worked for that three-set win in the opening round, and she really could have won that match in straight sets. But then to recover from that heartbreaking loss to win her last two matches is a testament to her resolve, and this is very impressive. Now, going over and talking about this upcoming golf versus Sabalenka semifinal, their last meeting, of course, was very recent at the Wuhan semifinals, which Sabalenka won by a score of 1-6, 6-4, 6-4. A lot of this match was defined by Coco's service struggles as she hit a record 21 double faults. And Goff actually comprehensively outplayed the Belarusian as she led her 6-1-4-2 before Sablenka found her range and made it more competitive from the ground. But for the first set and a half, Coco was really bullying the Belarusian around and she dictated proceedings. I expected then for the double faults to come into play ultimately as Coco's serve was a bit shaky in the rounds leading up to that semifinal. But in this latest match against Krejci, Coco's serve was decent. She only hit four double faults, which is very good for her standards. It is important to note, though, that Sablenka is bound to apply more pressure to the golf second serve than any opponent has been able to do so thus far. Even Iga, Iga let her off the hook quite a bit um, with her just missing so many second serve returns in their round robin match. I think the pressure from Arena might induce more double faults on the golf racket, not to mention, as I did say, she did improve her serve against Krejcikova. Coco still hit 11 double faults against Iga Shiontek, and that was a straight sets match. So, honestly, I would not be surprised if the double fault became more of an issue here again against Sabalenka in the semifinal. I think both women will need to definitely step up and improve their games for this match. Rodabakina played well against Sabalenka, but Arena kind of went away in that third set. And she was very error prone and gifted the Kazakhstani many points. Golf, meanwhile, I think needs to clean up her forehand because I know Sabalenka will still be seeking quite a few forehand to forehand exchanges. Arena, though, can take solace in knowing that Coco's ground game isn't as strong as it was in Wuhan. But I don't expect the Belarusian to receive as many freebies from Coco's serving double faults because 21 double faults is hard, is a hard act to, to re replicate and top. I also think it's important to note that Coco is an excellent returner. And I think though that she needs to be more opportunist opportunistic on her break chances because she really she really had opportunities to win both of the, of the first and second sets against Krejcikova, more notably the first set, um, but just was not able to catch in on her break point chances. And yes, Krejcikova was solid, but a lot of times Coco did not step up and was pretty error prone. And I do expect her, though, to elevate her level in this match and hopefully take more opportunities and take more chances whenever she has chances to do so against Sabalenka. I expect Coco to honestly play similarly to how she did against Iga, kind of using heavy spins with her, with her forehand to get the ball up and out of Sabalenka's strike zone. Meanwhile, Sabalenka is going to have to rely more, I feel, on her power to get the ball on top of the American and break down that forehand especially. And Sabalenka needs to come to the net too whenever she has chances to do so. Given my final prediction, I am anticipating another close one between these two. I have it going three sets, but I'm going to be giving the edge to Coco here in this one. I do not think that Coco honestly is a great matchup for Sabalenka. I think that Goff can both be aggressive whenever she needs to, especially on her backhand as well as She's able to mix in a lot of things with her forehand and varying the heights and, and spins and speeds with that wing. And as well as Coco is able, able to just get a lot of balls back in play. And we saw how that frustrated Shiontek in that round robin match. And for sure, I can see 
the same thing happening here in the semifinal. I am worried though about the golf forehand. Coco tends to improve it though against Sabalenka, but still with the courts playing a little bit faster and again, golf already showing that she has not been as strong with her ground game thus far this week. It, honestly, I don't know. That's why I was so, so close to having Sabalenka take this one. And it really, it was a toss up to me. And I could honestly see Arena take this one in straight sets to be totally transparent with you all. One thing though, that I think could get Coco over the edge is the aspect of the revenge factor. Coco has lost her last two meetings against Sablanka. Of course, they played earlier at the top of the year at the Australian Open, again in the semifinals, which Sablanka took in straight sets. And I think that Coco will be very, very determined to get her lick back. She came ultra close to doing so um, in Wuhan. And I think that Wuhan loss will only further fuel the American. You can also argue that Sablanka will be even more determined after losing that round robin match to Rabakina, but I still got to stick with my pick. Again, I do not think that Coco has been playing great tennis thus far, even in that win against Iga, but I still think that she'll be able to find a way like she has done throughout her two wins, and that's why I think that she'll still make the finals. Meanwhile, Shinwin Jang faces Babora Krejcikova for the second time, and it, it gives me an excuse to bring back this iconic moment from 2021. Do you know who is the winner of the last, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, the former champion here in Mach Lake Open 2020? 2020? No. Or 2019? I, I saw the picture, but I don't know the girl. Yeah, Barbara Krejcikova. Yes. Do you know her? Uh, tell me. Okay, she won a French Open this year. Wow, so good. <laughs> so, Zhang defeated Kachikova in the Zhangzhou final last year by a score of 2 6 6 2 6 4. Both women have a lot of momentum going into the semifinal as both have won their two most recent matches. Zhang defeated Elena Rabakina in three sets before absolutely clobbering Jasmine Paolini 6-1-6-1, playing one of the best matches she's played in her career thus far. Kachikova meanwhile defeated Pagula 3-3 three and, three, and of course Coco, Coco today in straight sets too. Barbora has proved that she definitely is a big match player and she has more experience in these big big moments compared to Zhang of course being a two-time major champion. Zhang though has more recent confidence of going like 30 and 5 since losing in the woman in first round. Shinwin appears to be the fitter of the two, which is why if Kachikova is going to win this match, it needs to be in straight sets. We saw Kachikova kind of fade away in that third set against Iga, and she kind of struggled physically too. I think Barbora though does have the game style to trouble Zhang with her being able to take time away from the Chinese woman with her big forehand too. And I could for sure see Karachikova having her big Adele moment kind of coming out of nowhere and taking the whole entire thing, especially because whenever she goes deep in kind of big tournaments, she tends to go all the way and win. She knows how to elevate her level even higher in the semifinal and final round. But I think her beating Jang in straight sets is kind of a big tough ask, especially with how well Shinwin is playing. So I think that Shinwin will ultimately outlast Babora and take this one in three sets. That is it for my WTA final semifinal preview. And let me know in the comments who y'all think will make the finals in Riyadh. Do you agree with me having Goff and Jane going through, or do you think that Sabalenka and Krishikova will be our finalists? Also, let me know your thoughts on Iga and Elena's 2024 seasons and the outlook for them for next season. Do you think the Iga will return to the top in 2025? And do you think that Rabakina can perhaps add more slams to her trophy cabinet next year too? Again, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you are notified whenever I post my WTA Finals final preview. Thank you all so much for watching and for your support. And I'll see you all next time here on Christian's Court.